The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, we're going to go over weeds in the garden and in the yard and how to deal with them properly and safely, as well as four free items that will help your garden grow better. Our guest will be author Joseph Tykondovich, and we'll answer your garden questions. And that all starts right now. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Welcome to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. I am your host, Joey Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. Thank you for taking time out of your day to be allow us to be part of it. You can get a hold of us if you've got a question you would like to talk to us. You can certainly do that by a couple of means, one being the emailing us at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to actually talk to us, you can put your fingers in your phone and dial 1-800-927-SHOW. 1-800-927-SHOW. Got a big show lined up for you. We appreciate that. Uh, You're tuned in for that. Uh, Holly, it is our 140th show. Woohoo! Uh, for those who may be listening for the first time or were in a market that uh, you've just listened uh, for 2021, we have uh, this is our fifth season doing this, and we have all the shows archived at our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable uh, Whether you're listening through that or a podcast replay or in studio video replay or radio or the radio app uh, on one of the 15 stations that are broadcasting our program this year. Uh, we have a lot of archived material in video, uh, in studio video, as well as podcast of each and every program of all 140 hours of programming. That's amazing. Uh, and we're we're looking to do another 140 plus. Right. Uh, we're self funded, so this is you know we don't have a team behind us. It's just us that that uh, finds the sponsors that pay for the airtime to allow everything to happen. So. A uh, lot of work, but we enjoy it. So let's uh, talk about something many people do not enjoy, Holly, which is weeds in the garden and in the yard. Yeah, many people, we get a lot of questions about how do you weed e- easier? How do you have less weeds? How do you do this? Why so, do I have so many my, weeds? Right. I have this type of weed, and what do I do with it? So um, I think one of the best tips, and it may seem obvious, is but is to pull the weeds Roots and all. Just because you pull the weeds and you don't see the weeds anymore doesn't mean that they're not coming back. Because a lot of times we just rip it the top off or take a garden hoe and just slice it off or a hula hoe and take it out and that's it. But there's a lot of roots under the soil and these weeds are very aggressive. That's why they're there because they are very tough and strong. And they will divide and grow new shoots and new plants by simply tiny, tiny root divisions. That's why whenever you may have a garden, some of you till every week and twice on Sunday, and that's your deal. Uh, We're just, you know, we inform the information and and maybe uh, this is why you're having so many weeds. Uh, Because you're you're tilling, you're disturbing the roots, you're killing the the you're killing the plants, the what you think you're killing the plants. However, your your tines of your tiller is cutting up all these roots, and then in about two weeks you have more weeds than you ever had before because all those divisions now have propagated into new plants. So right, so that's what happens is it creates that um, it creates those propagations. Right now, if you have purged your garden beds from all the roots of the fescue and the wire grass and all this and that and another and you till that that's a little different because you, you've pretty much got a clean palate however just because you don't have any roots doesn't mean you're not going to have weeds come up for a variety of different reasons some weed seeds can set dormant in your garden for up to 80 years yeah that's insane but it is a and, thing and yeah. you just keep turning it over and you expose those to the right conditions and pop there they come. Basically, yeah, you're just giving them oxygen and air and water and all the, those things. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Another thing is that if you 
if you do work on getting those weeds out, you're going to you're you'll essentially have less to till. You'll have less to less deal work. With. Yeah, less work. So pulling those weeds, and we understand it takes a lot of work, and that's one of the reasons why we went to raised bed system was because we got sick of just dealing with the insane amount of weeds. Now you you don't necessarily if you if you don't want to pull the weeds, there's a couple of different options. One, you can get a tiger torch, which is a propane torch that you actually burn the plants. Uh, you don't burn it to the ground to a crisp like charcoal. You hit it with the heat, and it disrupts and burns and, and breaks apart the cells of the plant, which causes it to die. So it's not going to come back. Uh, you can use um, a pro plugger. You can go and, and e e physically extract the little uh, uh, plug of root out and then backfill with compost or, or potting soil or dirt or whatever. Uh, you can right. also use uh, a natural green product uh called no more weeds from natgreenproduct.com it's a vinegar base product you spray it works within eight hours now it's not the poison stuff that, with the glyphosate and we'll talk about that in a minute uh no more weeds it's a it's an herbicide it's a non-selective herbicide from natgreenproducts.com um and the unique thing about it, it's a it's a uh it has a it's vinegar based, but it actually has a, a material in it that causes the vinegar to stick to the plants. And this is not just your kitchen ordinary vinegar. This is a high concentrated yeah, like vinegar. High con yeah, high concentrated, high density, very um, potent yes. vinegar. So another thing is that you can solar your yard or your garden. Uh -huh. So what you what you would do is this is not something you're going to do over a weekend and everything's going to be good. This is a commitment of time. Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to mow the lawn short. And then you're going to water it thoroughly so you create that um, moisture in the ground. And then you take a clear plastic and you cover whatever area you're trying to cover, trying to kill off the weeds, kill off the vegetation. Bas basically baking it. Now, some people use black plastic. It, it, it depends on what resource you look at, black versus black plastic versus white or clear. Right. So, I mean, we would use black plastic. Right, but it, it radiates the heat. It basically turns the underneath of wherever you're at into an oven and basically bakes the soil, bakes the seeds, bakes the grass, and kills it all. Now you're thinking, well, what about the microbial life? A lot of those worms and everything, they'll go elsewhere. Once you remove that and revitalize that area for either vegetable vegeta uh, vegetables or good uh, grass or sod, that stuff will come back. Yeah. That's not a big deal. Right. Yeah. No, they'll sense that there's essentially danger or whatever, and they will go somewhere else. They'll move to a different area. But in during the winter, if you do so over winter, you're going to leave it for about six months. If you do it during the summer. Which is recommended. Right. If you do it during the summer, it's going to take a couple months. And not all weeds are bad weeds. And we reference this being dandelions, uh, where we're at the... A medium of the the road in front of the house and the parkway, I literally hundreds of thousands, tens of hundreds of thousands of dandelions that are coming up. Now they all get mowed down, but you don't want to intoxify the dandelions. You don't want to spray those because that's the first food of the bees when they when the spring breaks. And just because you work very hard to remove the dandelions from your yard, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have dandelions there next year because. Your neighbor may not care, and dandelion seeds, the little puffer things, can travel up to five miles. Yeah, but it's important that we leave those dandelions there for the bees. Again, like Joyce said, not all weeds are bad weeds. Did we want to talk about glyphosate? Let's talk about glyphosate. Now, we're not going to do use any name brands, but glyphosate, it's the big chemicals that we use. It's the up product, the... Uh, Roll it up product, and also roll other up, uh, other other products have uh, different levels of uh, glyphosate in it. Now we'll, go we'll leave that up to you to, yeah. to figure out. Now, so glyphosate is a broad spectrum herbicide. I, I will say a lot of the people in the organic world doesn't do not does not like products that have glyphosate. However, the products this stuff works exactly as it is intended to do. It's not a gimmick. When it touches, it kills, and it's done. Right, and. If you if you use it responsibly, if yes. you choose to use it, then it's going to do what it needs to do. If you use it irresponsibly, that's when it becomes a problem. But it is a broad spectrum herbicide. It's going to kill everything wherever you spray it. Um, you do have to follow the directions, and on the directions it says what? to 
yeah, it says only to spray it if it's below, I think, 70 degrees and low humidity, and not everybody does that. Oh, it's middle of summer, it's 80 degrees out, it's hum humid, but I want to take care of this patch of whatever. I'm just going to break out my glyphosate and do this. And what happens is that when it's humid, it can cling to the water molecules in the air, and then it can drift. It can drift, and then you have this chemical drift situation and joy's familiar yeah. with the, the uh, smell yeah, I mean, we, of it and... right we're 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 in a lot of farm country in the upper and lower midwest and you guys spray grew up on a farm when it was time the beans and, and the gmo beans and the gmo corn was in the ground you come in and spray as long as it wasn't x amount of miles per hour windy the sprayers would come in and it didn't matter if it was 100 degrees or 65 degrees. It went and got done because they had a certain quota or, or they had to get across so many fields in order to keep up with everybody's demand. So it would be 85 degrees and you would just smell this drift of molecules of this chemical, the glyphosate, throughout the farm. You know, no matter where you were at, it could be on the back 40, which we had a back 40. That's a real thing. And uh, you could be all the way up the house and you could just smell it. We, we had a back 42. But it was like back forty inches. Forty inches, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and, and you know that's just that's just the life of the farm, right? So we're not yeah. you know knocking anybody. That we're just telling you what it is. No, and um, agriculture is is vital to our to our uh, living. So with that being said, speaking uh, of agriculture, and another thing of being vital is is taking care and, and being aware of what's in the food that you grow, vegetables, and the meat that you process, meat sticks. Uh, steaks, whatever it is, and even if you don't process your own meat, Walton's Incorporated, they've got all the seasonings that you possibly could need for your summer barbecue. Impress your friends, impress your spouse, your spouse or your family with the best spices that you can get a hold of. Yeah, I know Joey likes the uh, barbecue sprinkle, whatever that is. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, the Gardening with Joey and Holly Radio Show is brought to you today by our sponsors, Walton's Inc., um, again, we know it's it's important to you know it's in your food. They have everything for everything but the meat. So they have things to make jerky, snack sticks. They have the equipment. They have the sausage stuffing equipment. They have the grinders, all of that. If you need something for meat processing, Bolton's has it. Right, and they have. If this, they don't have it, it doesn't exist. They have. They even have seasonings for vegetables. Yes. So you can definitely take a look. You can go to waltonsinc.com. If you want to learn some tips or tricks you can about making these meat products, you go to meatgistics.com. There's a whole community there. So, again, check out waltonsinc.com or meatgistics.com. When we come back, do you want some to, to learn about some free items that will help your garden be more successful? We're going to cover those when we come back. You're listening to Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show a program to help your garden grow better got a question for joey and holly send it via email anytime to garden talk radio at gmail.com we here at the gardening with joey and holly radio show gardens understand that healthy soil is the key to a successful garden we know that chemical fertilizer burns carbon out of the soil and kills the microbes needed for a healthy soil ecosystem no worries Chicken Soup for the Soil by Dr. Jim's will stimulate life into your soil, supplying all the nutrients most fertilizers neglect. Rather than force-feeding water-soluble chemical fertilizer, we suggest feeding the microbes a smorgasbord of 100% biodegradable nutrients that your plants can consume when they need them. The nutrients are readily available to maximize their genetic potential. Chicken Soup for the Soil will increase the quality of the fruit and vegetables you grow. Visit drjims.com. That's D-R-J-I-M-Z.com. Chip Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, Chip Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to chipdrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called Internal Wood Stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops, by spraying on Internal Wood Stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts. Internal Wood Stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. 
Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Rinse kit, your hose on the go. Pressurized water at your fingertips without pumping or battery. Simply fill from your spigot or sink on your way out to the garden, beach, or anywhere. Spray it, wash it, rinse kit. How would you like to be able to fertilize, aerate, and dethatch your lawn using just one product and at the same time improve the soil and root development? Introducing Lawn Force 5, a five-way lawn care kit in a bottle. Lawn Force 5 gives you a lush and healthy lawn you can be proud of. And it takes away the expense of hard work that comes with mechanically aerating and dethatching the lawn. Visit our friends at natureslawn.com to find out more about the amazing Lawn Force 5 product. That's natureslawn.com. Use discount code GARDEN-TALK for 10% off your order. You move your lawn sprinklers all over the yard, but you always end up putting them in the same spots. Why not just bury them there? Out of sight, always ready to use, pre-adjusted to water the precise areas you want. Quick Snap Sprinklers makes it easy. In-ground sprinklers without the hassle or expense of laying pipe. Put the sprinklers anywhere in your lawn or garden. Snap on a hose to supply the water. Water on, it pops up. Water off, it drops below ground. You can mow right over it. You can have a buried sprinkler system up and running in just minutes. Each quick snap saves thousands of dollars. They install in minutes and operate for years. Visit quicksnapsprinkler.com. Protect your plants against damage with a 3-in-1 plant guard and special blend fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. We've been using a game-changing tool called SeedLinked to find and review our seeds this year. It makes finding the right seeds simple. It is driven by growers data so you can really see what's best for your location. Check it out at seedlinked.com or download the mobile app today. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. See what all you can do with a real Tiger Torch. Visit TigerTorchLTD.com for more information. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Blue Ribbon Organics, Naturally Green Products, Ironwood Tool Company, Easy Step Products, Rinse Kit, Soul Brew Kabucha, Wild Delight, Rikon Vitova, Chip Drop, Bailbuster.com. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for hanging around with us to learn about some free things in which you can utilize in your garden to help it grow better. But first, if you're tired of dragging that hose around or a watering can or not even watering sufficiently because you don't have time, Tree Diaper has that all taken care of for you. Yeah. How do you water your trees? You likely drag a hose over to it, let the hose run for about half an hour. While Sometimes you, grow, you forget about the right, hose. Yeah. While you go do something else, you need to stop doing that. You can increase your water efficiency and save money with Tree Diaper. No hoses to drag around constantly. Tree Diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases stored rainwater when the trees need it. The Tree Diaper is filled with water from rain or when you water and slowly release water over three weeks. Tree Diaper will improve the way you water your plants every time it rains. Tree Diaper recharges. Made in the USA, you can check out all the sizes they have available. Again, that's TreeDiaper.com. Tree Diaper will keep your trees happy. Well, whenever uh, you hear the word free, a lot of gardeners are happy too. So we've, through our experiences of being in the garden and doing videos and doing radio shows and making the mistakes so you don't have to, we've stumbled across several different things in which we have been able to utilize to accelerate and help the production of our garden. And we're going to see how many we can get through here. But one is simply pallets. Uh, pallets that are heat treated. Now, a pallet is not like a treated two by ten that's you know going to last eight to ten years. Pallets 
three, maybe four years at tops. We've got one. We uh, What I'm talking about with the pallets is pallet raised beds. We've got, if you go to the website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on, or under the search bar, type in pallet raised beds. We've got two instructional videos on how we've done it in a very simple manner. If it's not, you don't have to bust a bunch of boards down and sand them down and glaze them and cover them with all this other stuff. Very simple to do. And right. you're able to make raised beds uh, 42 inches wide by as long as you want, because uh, 40 inches wide, because that's how wide a pallet is. But you want to make sure that they are not chemically treated or have had like some kind of toxic chemical that has splashed on them. Right. Another thing people are doing with pallets is they're making like compost boxes with them. Right. Type of thing. I mean, there's lots of uses for pallets, but that's another garden thing that you can do as well. You can even somehow fashion it into a trellis if you get creative enough. Oh, yeah. You can do a lot of things with a pallet. Uh, small, big, large, whatever in between uh, works very well. Another thing in which um, you can utilize is metal coffee cans, preferably. Now, the plastic ones or the cardboard ones with that aluminum casing around it works well. The benefit to this is you're having a season extender early in the spring. What we have found is you take a metal coffee can, that's what I'm going to reference, but anything will work. You cut the bottom off with a can opener, and then you take and you plant your summer squash about 30 days before you normally would do such in your area. You put the top on, but you cut everything out of the top except for the lip, that ring that snaps onto the actual can. And then you put a piece of saran wrap or four mil clear plastic. What occurs at that point is it kind of warms the soil enough that these Summer squashes will sprout. This would work for winter squash as well. Uh, we've just never done it on that particular application. And by the time the 30, you know, we typically where we're at, we would plant our summer squash Memorial Day weekend. Well, we can get in there about the 1st of May, do this, and then by Memorial Day weekend, the top can be completely removed. As the plant grows, you want to crack a little bit. Uh about a week before you completely remove it. And then you've already got plant starts that are 30 days ahead of where they would be. Instead of waiting till the end of June to have them, you got the end of May and you're already up and going. Right. So, yeah, you can use those to extend the season. And then, um, and you could the, do that with other plants. Right. We, we've just experimented with the squash, uh, the summer squash, and it's worked very Did well we for Do it with like uh, a brassica? I thought maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, you can also take your clean grass clippings. So when we say clean grass clippings, we mean that they don't have any weed seeds in them. And they also are not, have not been sprayed with any sort of grass. Uh, weed and feed. Weed and feed or pesticide or broadleaf herbicide, herbicide yeah. or something like that. So, um, yeah, seed free, weed seed free, and then chemical free grass clippings. The reason be, if you have been, if it's been sprayed with a weed and feed of a non or uh, of a chemical base or a broadleaf spray, those molecules of that chemical will attach to the grass clippings. You bring them in. You water, it rains, it releases, and into the soil it goes, toxifies your garden, and, and greatly inhibits or kills your potatoes, your eggplants, your peppers, your broadleaf plants, and it takes a while to remitigate the soil in order to get that toxicity out. Same thing if you put it in your compost pile. It ain't gonna ta it's going to take a long time. Even if the soil is black like potting soil, you're going to have a big problem. So be aware. Right. So, yeah. So you want to let them dry out, and then once they're dried out, you can use them as mulch, and they are free mulch, and they work really well. Uh, and you can, you know, you have a lot of free mulch. Other ways of utilizing other other mulches that are free on your property, obviously, leaves in the fall. Uh, you can use shredded paper, not the most eye peeling, but we all get a lot of junk, and uh, we shred cardboard as well. Uh, people are like, what about the glue? Well, we suck in a lot of chemicals. A little glue in a cardboard box, in our opinion, not really going to make a difference between the, you know, that type of thing. Another option is if you don't want to shred the cardboard, you could lay the cardboard over a bed and mm -hmm. then cut holes. Like if you're going to plant tomatoes, you would cut a hole and then you can use that cardboard as a mulch and you can just kind of more over. of a natural, uh, uh, weed barrier yeah. cloth. Right. So that's an option for cardboard, cardboard boxes. Now, really quick, I just want to talk about the planting stick. Okay. Because this was something that Joey came up with, which was actually quite innovative. Um, he took 
What did you take? Some vacuum cleaner? Tubes? Three vacuum. Back in the day, we used to do a lot of scrapping. So I took three vacuum tube extension wands, which you could just take a two inch PVC pipe or a one inch PVC pipe, and made it to where it was about chest high. And then I ta- took a two liter soda bottle and cut it top to bottom, not across, top to bottom, and then cut a hole in the in that side of the bottle to shimmy over top of that PVC pipe. Then you could dump your seeds into that soda bottle, which was your reservoir or your hopper. And as you walk, you could just drop the seeds every however many inches apart you needed, and you never had to bend over. Right, and you can—I mean, you could do this with any large seed. Right, mostly beans or like corn. Bean, corn, yeah. uh, even squash. If you if you're planting, yeah. you know, an acre of summer squash, and you don't want to bend down, you punch the holes. You know, a lot of different applications. Or even gourds. Yeah. Yeah. So the planting stick, it sounds, uh, to me, I think it's the saying, it sounds funny, but it was very innovative and it was something that, you know, maybe we should, uh, maybe we should use again. I don't know, but we don't, we have the raised beds, so it's a little bit Well, you can sled easier. it at an angle yeah. and walk through, you know, that type of thing. Uh, so coffee grounds, if you are able to, if you drink a lot of coffee, that's great. Uh, if you have access, which talk about how do you get coffee grounds, Holly, and then I'll explain that they're okay. Sure. So what we used to do, and we haven't done this for a while, but what we, we used to do is take, we would call a local coffee shop and we would say, you know, we want your grounds. And then typically they'll say, bring a five gallon bucket in and then just drop it off and it'll be ready in a few days. And so that's what we used to do. And actually, I think at one point we were using two different locations, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, and it fills up within a day or so, especially if it's uh, an area that has a lot of people that Drink coffee. And the filters are biodegradable. You can work them in the soil. You want to work the coffee grounds in the soil. Coffee grounds contain about 2% nitrogen, about a 0.4% phosphorus, about 2.2% potassium, somewhere in that range. Your big, your big element there is the nitrogen. It will not make your soil acidic because the acidity has been brewed out during the coffee-making process. It's great for uh, worm bins, organic matter in the soil, bringing and, and revitalizing um, microbial life. A lot of different uses, benefit, ben, beneficial uses for coffee grounds, and they're free and they're not harmful. Even the flavored coffees, don't worry about that. That's not going to hurt anything. Right. But and you do want to work them in because that evaporation of the nitrogen, uh, you'll lose that. But you'd still get the grounds if you didn't. Now, just a heads up, sometimes these places want a lid, especially yes. if they're in a more urban area and they need to leave that bucket outside they need to have a lid so definitely keep that in mind before you drop it off or just give them a call and wood, wood chips are another one uh, or you can get yeah. them from chip, chip drop, drop. Mm-hmm. uh you sign up for a free account uh sometimes if you offer the chip drop is wood chip people that the the linesmen and in different companies they sign up in order to get rid of their wood chips so they don't have to pay a fee at the wherever it is the the landfill or wherever in order to dump their load so you sign up and you say, hey, you know, this and this and this. Now you get anywhere between four and 20 yards, a cubic yard. So you don't get to decide, I want four yards. You may get four, you may get 20. Um, however, they may not come to you because they have to pay in order to drive the truck. So if you offer, hey, I'm in X, Y area, I will offer you $20 for a load. You're going to get a whole lot more response than just signing up and saying, whenever you are in the area, bring it over. If they can get a little fuel reimbursement, they are much happier, and they'll put it wherever you uh, kind of ask for it. So works very well for perennials, for around beds. Uh, put it around beds. You don't have to mow. You're environmentally friendly. It doesn't allow the grass to put seeds on to cause more problems. So Yeah, it's something that we definitely want to do around our raised beds. So, yeah, chip drop, it's a good resource, and maybe just a nominal resource. And yeah. then... We have the weed tea. Weed tea. Which is basically exactly you just take, what it sounds like. <laughs> it it doesn't smell good, no, just so you know. No, it you wanna like... you wanna do it right before rain or when the neighbors that you don't like are out having a picnic. I think that would be a good time to <laughs> cause it if you've ever been on a farm and you've dug up in a cattle lot, the fragrance that comes off of this is a very uh it, it's not been oxidized. It's got a very rank smell to it. Um, so it will, but it, it, it's, it's a high nitrogen, highly concentrated way to feed your plants. Right. You're taking the weeds, you're putting them in a big tub, you're filling that tub with water and letting it set for about two weeks. Mm-hmm. And then you drain it off or, or dip a bucket in there and then you water around your plants and it's a very, it's, it's a Gatorade for your plants. Essentially. Yeah. And, but it does not smell pleasant. So just keep that in mind. Well, 
now that the weather is warming up in most areas, if not everywhere, you're going to have to deal with another problem besides the stink of the uh, weed tea. It's going to be those various beetles, weevils, and boars, including those Japanese beetles in your yard. And what better way to prevent these pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they are larva? grub gone is an easy-to-apply granular product that can be spread on your turf to successfully control grub invaders. Developed by Phylum Bioproducts from a naturally occurring bacteria, grub gone is a non-chemical BT product that specifically targets only scarab pests, and it's safe to use around bees and other beneficial insects. And if you already have those beetles flying around your yard, and some of you do, Beetle Gone is an organic water dispersible powder that can be sprayed directly, yes, directly on your edible plants. Find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P H Y L L O M bioproducts.com. Do not go anywhere. When we come back, author Joseph Tygondovich will be with us. You're listening to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show, a program to help your garden grow better. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1-800-927-SHOW. This week's garden tip is brought to you by Yard Glider, the cart without wheels, loads without lifting, hauls more, dumps faster, built to last, and built for hard work. Multiple sizes available at YardGlider.com. That's YardGlider.com. Mulch is an important item you can add to your garden. It can keep the soil warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Mulching your garden can be a great benefit to your plants and to you. Mulch suppresses weeds and holds moisture in. Mulches can be anything you have on your property. Dry, seed-free, chemical-free, grass clippings, to straw, to fall leaves, to even shredded paper. This week's garden tip was brought to you by Yard Glider. The cart without wheels, loads without lifting, hauls more, dumps faster, built to last, and built for hard work. Perfect for homeowners, arborists, hunters, landscapers. Pull it behind an ATV, a lawnmower, or pull it yourself. Multiple sizes available at YardGlider.com. That's YardGlider.com. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy Plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloominteasyplants.com. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Use coupon code RADIO21 and get 15% off your entire order. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. Soul Brew Kombucha is founded and handcrafted in Milwaukee, 100% organic, formulated for ultimate health and enjoyment. Find out the benefits of drinking kombucha and where to purchase at MySoulBrew.com or find them on Facebook at MySoulBrew. Straw Bell Gardening is all the rage. Get your bell started easily with the Bell Buster Straw Bell Conditioning Formula. This is the only product that has been specifically formulated for use in straw bell gardening. Each unit contains 250 million colony forming units of trichoderma, fungi, and bacillus bacteria in addition to the fertilizer itself produces fantastic results with a bountiful production of vegetable crops start with the best to get the best traditional or organic formula take the guesswork out of conditioning your straw bell go to bellbuster.com to find out more looking for a non-toxic fly control call the bug farm 1-800-248-BUGS bugs 
The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Simply Earth, Seed Savers Exchange, Quick Snap Sprinklers, Water Hoop, Timber Pro Coatings, Bloom and Easy Plants, Pomona Universal Pectin, Ivy Organics, Tiger Torch, Happy Leaf LED, Seed Link. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Joseph Tygondovich will be moments away. But first, do you have carpenter bees? Or, or let me ask you this. If you don't have carpenter bees, I'm going to guess the answer of do you want carpenter bees is a no. And rescue can either fix the problem you have or prevent the problem before it happens. Yeah, their carpenter bee trap stick also works on wasps, mud daubers. Um, carpenter bees bore holes and tunnel into wood to lay eggs and care for larvae. These holes and tunnels in the wood invite mold and rot into your home, deck, fences, and any other wood structures. Spring is the best time to catch carpenter bees before they mate. The trap stick can be used throughout the summer and early fall as well to control carpenter bees. Rescue makes a carpenter bee trap stick that is simple to use and pesticide free. You can hang the trap stick from wood structures you want to protect you go to carpenterbeecontrol.com to watch a video about carpenter bees and learn how to prevent them um we can find the trap stick from rescue if you go to rescue.com you can find all of their products um, for pest control and it's made in the usa yep the trap stick from rescue to take care of that holly let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week Joseph Tykonovich is a passionate gardener. He not only gardens in his yard, but his friend's yard and even in his closet with lights. He is an author, and his most recent book is The Comic Book Guide to Growing Food. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Well, we thank you for taking time out of your day and uh, sharing some of your knowledge with Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. So let's just jump right in. Uh, not to take anything away from the vegetable growing that everybody's kind of doing right now, but it seems like many people have gotten house plants in the last year. What are some great house plants tips to to keep those pandemic plants alive and thriving? Because we all kind of know we put it to the side and we forget about it. <laughs> yeah, my my favorite um, tool that I've been using with my house plants is actually um, my smartphone. Um, so I found that you can download free light meter apps. Um, for your smartphone, which will give you a reading of the amount of light. And it's really useful because often I have houseplants that are stretching and I know they need more light, but it's not really clear where in my house there is more light for them. And using that light meter app on my smartphone, I can walk around the house to my different windows and kind of figure out where it actually is the brightest sunlight to move those things in uh, to give them the more sunlight and keep, keep them growing more healthily. Well, that's definitely a really we're gonna really we're good gonna tip. use that tip. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so you are the editor of North North American Rock Garden Society Journal. Uh, for our listeners who don't know, what is rock gardening? Rock gardening is a style of gardening that kind of takes inspiration from kind of landscapes you would see on the top of mountains and the plants that grow in alpine regions. So it's often these miniaturized, really cool miniaturized little plants. Um, native to alpine regions or look like they would be native to alpine regions and sort of recreating the rocky landscapes that they grow in. Um, so it's a really fun style of gardening if you like collecting weird plants because you can grow a lot of really unusual plants in a rock garden. Um, and it's also a really great style of gardening for people with limited spaces because it's really a focused on sort of this miniaturized landscape. So if you just have a small garden or a balcony or, or containers, it can be a really fun style to, to grow unusual plants in small areas. So it's kind of, is it more like, would you consider it a miniature garden type uh, genre or can it be like any type size? Um, it's usually miniaturized. Okay. I mean, the, it's it's a, it's a big tent and I think everyone who does rock gardening would give a different definition. But the main emphasis is on these uh, sort of miniaturized uh, little tiny plants, um, which are typically found in sort of of rocky soils, high elevation, sort of harsh conditions. Okay. Well, let's talk about your new book. The Comic Book Guide to Growing Food has a ton of great information. What inspired you to write a book like this? And what is some interesting parts of the book that you would that, that our listeners would find intriguing uh, to pick up a copy to, to read it for themselves? So I wanted to write a book that was really aimed at beginning gardeners. And I think you know, people who want to have a vegetable garden, but really don't know, you know, don't know the first thing about it and don't know where to start. And I felt like 
it can be kind of overwhelming. There's a lot of information, a lot of moving parts to making a garden if you haven't done it before. So I set out to do this book, which kind of gives you everything you need to be successful if you're in your first year uh, vegetable gardening, and then decided to do it in this form of, of a comic book or graphic novel because I felt like it was a fun way to present the information. So it's it's light, it's easy to read, it's enjoyable, it's not overwhelming, but it's also a really great way to pack a lot of information into it because we can use all the visuals in there to really give you a lot of information in that. Um, so I really think, you know, I wrote it for if you're like a beginner gardener who feels a little overwhelmed with trying to get your first vegetable garden started, or if, you know, you have a friend who's a beginning gardener, I think that's, that's who would, would you know, I wrote the book for, and I think we most enjoy uh, picking up a copy. Well, you aim for beginner gardeners. You gambled and won on that in the last uh, year's time. Um, <laughs> and, and, and for even children uh, of probably, I don't know, eight and up, I mean, they, I've read it. It's very informative and it's easy to comprehend. It's not a big novel or a bunch of really deep stuff. It's very simple. You, you laid it out very easily for anybody to understand it. Yeah, that's great to hear. That was really the goal because I do think – it can be overwhelming. So yeah, I, I have heard, you know, I didn't write it like specifically for children, but I've gotten a, li a lot of great feedback from, uh, uh, I got some really great emails from younger readers and kids who've read it and really enjoyed it. So yeah, I really, I really aim to keep it informative, but also, you know, like give you the information you need to be a successful gardener, but in a way that's fun and engaging and not, not too heavy or overwhelming. I agree. I think it, it's a it's a really unique gardening book, and I think um, I think a lot of people I could see many different people enjoying it. Now we are talking with Joseph Tagoinovich, and he is an author and a passionate gardener. So lead in your soil is a concern for many. Um, depending on where you live, it could definitely be a concern. A few questions here: Is it safe to grow vegetables in lead contaminated soil? How do you know if you have lead in your soil? And if you if you just send off for a test, like a standard soil test, do they automatically test for lead? Yeah, so lead in soil, the biggest concern is usually if you're gardening close to a house that had leaded paint on it. So before 1978, most house paints plant uh, excuse me, house paints had lead in them. And then that lead flakes off the house and contaminates the soil around the house. So the biggest concern is if you're gardening near an older home, and that's really when you need to get a, a soil test. So if you live in a newer neighborhood that was built after, you know, around 1980, you're part of pretty much safe there. Um, but around older homes, it's or if you're gardening in like a vacant lot in an urban setting where you really don't know the history of that soil, um, it's a good idea to get a soil test. Um, and so a standard soil test usually will just tell you what fertilizer your soil needs. You're going to have to add, add a little extra to get a uh, test for lead. Um, it's not it's not a lot, but it's and getting a soil test is always always a great idea to do when you're starting a garden. Um, so if you do have an older home, it's a really a, a good idea to get that test. Um, and then if you do find lead in your soil, it's not the end of the world. You just need to take some precautions. So lead is not absorbed into the the tissues of a plant. It's more on the surface of the leaves and the roots. And then you can get exposed by like breathing the dust or or um, when you're working in the garden. So if you do find that there is lead in your soil, it may be a matter of moving your garden farther away from the house where that lead wouldn't be a problem. Uh, building raised beds and bringing in clean soil, growing in containers, choosing ornamental plants rather than edible plants. There's a lot of things you can do to deal with that, but it's definitely a good a good you know, idea to get a test if you're gardening around an older home that might have had lead paint. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I've heard this. Lead doesn't uh, transfer into other soils, so if you, it can, you can kind of cap it. You can put a raised bed on top of the soil that is contaminated, and it won't leach into, or am I completely yeah, off? Yeah, that's that's my understanding, too. Okay. Uh, the biggest thing you want to do is then avoid, uh, like, digging up, you mm -hmm. know, tilling that soil. So you can put a raised bed with clean soil on top of it, and, that, and as long as you're not digging up that soil and mixing it, you're, you're good to go. And you wouldn't want to grow root vegetables, say, in that raised bed. They're going to send roots down deep into the contaminated soil. But you could grow things that are going to, you know, you're going to be harvesting the leaves or the fruits up in that raised bed. So okay. it's definitely manageable if you find it. It's not like the end of the world, but it's it's a good idea to, to find out if it's there, just to take some precautions to keep you and your family safe from it. <clears throat> So many people are new to gardening as of last year, or maybe they're new this year. They watched their neighbors and family and friends garden, and they were like, 
we're going to give it a go this year. Because we can't go anywhere. Because we, we still can't go anywhere. <laughs> right. What else can we do? <laughs> right. So what are some good tips for plant shopping um, they should consider before heading to the garden center, getting overly excited, and filling up their carts? And I know maybe garden centers love that, but um, when you have 45 plants in room for 12, you may need some tips. <laughs> Yeah, I think the, I mean, the first tip I would say for your uh, listening area is uh, you need to wait on on some things. Um, I feel like this time of year we get excited when warm weather comes and there's still going to be a chance of frost. So you don't want to rush out too early and buy tomatoes or eggplants or peppers uh, that can't take frost until you're into that, you know, frost free zone. So I'd say before you start shopping, uh, get online and just put the name of your town and the words like last frost date into a Google search or any kind of search. And they'll pop up when you have, you can be, you know, confident that you're not going to have any more frost and it'll be safe to go shopping for those tinder plants. Um, so sometimes we get overly excited and start shopping <laughs> too early um, and then we run into problems when cool weather returns. Um, the other thing I think that's a good rule of thumb if you're a beginning gardener is to remember that bigger is not always better. So if you see a really large plant growing in a small pot, that's going to be root bound. The roots are going to be growing really densely in that little pot and it's going to struggle to transplant well. So my rule of thumb is to look for plants that are roughly the same size as the pot they're growing in rather than a really huge pot and a, and a, a huge plant and a little pot. So sort of erring on the side of smaller plants and being a little bit patient with the weather might, might help people uh, get off to a good start at, in their plant shopping. A lot of good advice. Joseph, we appreciate the time you've offered to us. How can our listeners find more about you and get your book? Um, well, you can find the comic book guide for food from you know anywhere you like to buy books. Um, and then if you go to my website, which is josephgardens.com, I have links to my social media and my books and uh, all kinds of information there. Well, Joseph, we thank you again for taking time with us and not only sharing your information with us as, uh, and our listeners, but we'll take some of that advice and, and utilize for our indoor growing techniques as well. Well, thanks for having me. It was really fun. Absolutely. And when we come back, it's going to be your garden questions, our garden answers. You're listening to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Straight from the farm, fields, and briar patch, Piper and Leaf Artisan Tea is a tea like you've never imagined it. Get our award-winning tea delivered right to your front door and become part of the Piper and Leaf family. Free shipping over $75 at piperandleaf.com. Deer Defeat is an all-natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night dries clear and odorless it will not clog your sprayer deer defeat works for 30 days through rain snow and freeze safe effective and works on rabbits money back guarantee to purchase go to deerdefeat.com and use code radio to save 10 percent on your order deer defeat it can't be beat the water hoop is a portable water sprinkler system that allows you to target water evenly around the root ball of your tree or bush. Conforms to various shapes for your watering needs. The water hoop reduces runoff and saves money. Visit waterhoop.com. Gardening is the number one hobby and birding is the number two hobby nationwide. They go hand in hand. Birds help gardens grow by eating bad bugs. Reward them with Wild Delights premium quality mixes. Wild Delights premium mixes are made with tasty nuts and berries and not just filler food like milo and cracked corn. Feed the birds the nutrition they need. This keeps your feathered friends coming back year after year for your visual delight and for the happiness of your garden. Keep your feeders full all year round with Wild Delight premium bird food. Find out more at wilddelight.com. Chapin has the tools to help you this season. We have a wide range of sprayers to help you control pests, weeds, and fertilize your plants. From handheld to ATV sprayers, we have it all. Use our broadcast spreader to feed and seed your green spaces. Water and feed at the same time with our fertilizer injectors. Find shape and equipment at major home improvement and hardware stores and online at chapinmfg.com. Chapin, cover more ground. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at dripworks.com. Seed Savers Exchange has been saving, preserving, and sharing heirloom seeds since 1975 and today continues to provide those seeds for gardeners just like you. 
They have over 600 varieties. Visit Seedsavers.org to request a free catalog or to purchase seeds online for this year's growing season. That's Seedsavers.org. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Dripworks, Waltons Incorporated, Tree Diaper, Janie's Mill, Phylum Bioproducts, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Nature's Lawn and Garden Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Dr. Jim's, Root Maker. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us today. If you've got a question, it's question and answer time now. You can submit that question by going to your email address or going to your email and sending us the email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you'd much rather talk to us, you can give us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-SHOW. If we can't get to you, please leave a message. We will call you back with the answer to your problem or your situation. I uh, had a number of questions come in. We'll see what we can squeeze in in the time allotted here. What do I spray into the holes that the carpenter bees have made? Also, the can, also can the wood be sprayed to prevent future problems? The area in question is above the front porch ceiling. It's made of pine. Sure. So, yeah, carpenter bees overwinter in wood. They come out in the spring, usually April and May, and they mate. Then the females lay their fertilized eggs in excavated tunnels in wood. So first you want to make sure there are no bees in the old holes. You can push a stick or pencil in the hole to make sure it's empty, or you can kill whatever is in there. And then you can take a cotton ball with rubbing alcohol, shove it in the hole. The alcohol rubs oxygen and kills what may be in the hole. And then you want to fill the holes with some putty, um, wood putty, that typically will take care of the situation. And then... To prevent the problem from happening. To prevent the happening. problem, yeah. yeah. Um, otherwise, you can put a dowel rod or plugs in the hole. Uh, to another thing. And then to keep the bees from doing this again, you can get a product from Rescue. There's a carpenter bee trap stick that also works on wasps and mud daubers. So there you go. Uh, if you, you get it before, and but fix it so they don't happen again. I have... Tim, I have tomato seedlings that are dropping lower leaves. What can I do? I plan to move them to a larger pot. The other flats have some issue too, but not the same as this one. I uh, do not know what's going on. Any advice? Can you help? Sure. So we've had this problem before. Um, one thing is that the temperature, if, if it's too cool wherever your seedlings are, that could be a problem. So you want to make sure that they are in an accurately warm place, about 68 degrees above. 66 ish. 68, you know. 72, somewhere yeah, around. Yeah, somewhere 68, 72. Um, another thing is if they're being overwatered, this is going to cause the leaves to fall off, the lower leaves to fall off, or if they're not getting enough light. Um, it's not a huge deal if the lower leaves fall off as tomato plants are the nightshade family. So they essentially will grow, grow roots all along their stem. So you could just bury it a little bit deeper. But if they continue to fall off, then you may want to check out a solution such as putting them in a warmer spot. Now over watering them and make sure they have enough light. And put a fan on them too. Yeah. Kind of, kind of agitate them. Uh, Susan writes in from Southern California. Simply says, I have groundhogs. I have deer. Can you help me? Well, yes, we can. We can do that. Uh, you can get a product. You can go to deerdefeat.com and use r coupon code radio. And that will save 10% on your order. And that doesn't, it, it has, it's a all natural uh liquid that you put on your plants it doesn't smell it doesn't freeze i mean it'll smell for first 30 minutes then humans can't smell it but the, the animals still can it, it it repels deer rabbits and groundhogs so deerdefeat.com radio as a coupon code save 10 percent on your order had a question here come in about greenhouses holly i'm yeah. looking for a greenhouse i see that many of them are on sale now which is the best for vegetables for future growing the green cover or the clear cover is there a difference uh as many different things i've seen online no explanation really sure so um in studies it's found that using the green plastic to cover greenhouse which is um a slight a slight green the the plants will grow shorter than being covered in a clear plastic not enough sun exposure, not enough sun exposure. makes them a little shorter and squattier yeah. yeah 
So you want to look for a more clear plastic. You can use something like a four to six millimeter thick sheeting. Um, the opaque green will not let it get enough light. So you want to go with the clear. You can do a double layer to reduce heat loss in the winter. But once you get to summer, you would want to remove a layer. So yeah, you want to look for the clear, uh, what is it called? Polyethylene. And you want four to six mil. Mm -hmm. And you want to allow those plants to have that light. Um, Same kind of plastic you use for like a high, uh, a low tunnel or a high tunnel, the, the four to six mil uh, plastic, clear plastic or opaque. Um, it's not perfectly clear. It's got a little white film to it, but that's what they use. Yeah. Right. And so, and another thing is that if you were buying this greenhouse, wherever you're buying it from, you can definitely talk about your needs with them. And, and you can take it back. And you can take it back. I I mean, unless you're buying it, you know, on like a marketplace or something yeah. or Craigslist or whatever, and it's used, that might be different. Yeah. But um, if you are having it built, you definitely want to talk about your needs, you know, your space, what you're trying to grow, especially where you are, things like that. All right, another question come in. I was wondering where I could sell my produce. Is it legal for me to harvest and sell produce out of my backyard? Is it possible to sell at a local supermarket or farmer's market? So with that, you have to check out, a lot of times it's called cottage laws or cottage sales mm -hmm. laws. Um, if you can just sell it out of your backyard, Table, you, like a table in the front, you know, zucchini, $2 a piece or whatever, that type of thing. Now, if you live in a rural area and you got people driving by and you got a farm stand, I don't ain't know. Ain't nobody going to check. Ain't nobody going to check anything. The, the cops may pull in and grab a couple of watermelon on, yeah. off your cart. Yeah. The cops are looking for the out-of-state drivers to get <laughs> yeah. to, to pull them over, not your, your watermelon. Um, however, if you live but, in the but there's, city. But there's a lot of red tape that you yeah. need to make sure you go through correctly. Otherwise, it can be a lot of fines. I will say this. I took a rec department class about selling canned goods, and I learned a lot about these cottage Law. Oh, that, so that's if, even more of a mess there, the, the canned good stuff. Right. But I'm saying that like yeah. for if you can check to see if your local rec department has a class, you could start there. You could just contact your city, contact the farmer's market, um, things like that. Especially just contact your city because you don't want to set up this little stand and then all of a sudden you have an angry neighbor shaking your fist at you and then you got cops knocking on your door or a nasty letter from the city. So definitely just check your resources. As far as like a grocery store or a small market in the area, just give them a call. Um, we don't, you know, we don't know any of those specifics, but a every, lot of times, every place is different. Every place is different. A lot of times you just call, ask for the manager, say to the manager, this is what I'm looking for. They might give you a, a different number for an office or something. And then you can go from there. So just kind of use your resources, call around and, um, before you invest a lot of time and energy setting up a cute little stand, you might want to make sure that you're not going to waste that time. Right. All right. Can you eat beet greens? Well, if they're young and tender, yes. If they're old and bulbed out, the bottom is, you're, it's, it's going to be like eating. Uh, it's not good. You can cook. So you can cook. You yeah. can eat them. You can it's eat a, them. It's but a matter of if you want to. Right. Right. So if, if some people do use the beet greens as like a green and they let them cook with like some sort of fatty material, animal fat, whatever, and they do, they can become more tender. But if you're looking to just like quickly saute them, you want to eat the younger ones. Right. The, the older ones, uh, not so much. They're going to be a pain, pain to deal with. Well, uh, hopefully we were not a pain to deal with today, and we gave you some information in order to help your garden grow better. If you miss, We're out of time. If you missed any portion of this program or want to revisit it, you can certainly do that by going to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and r clicking on the Radio Season 5 tab at the top of the page. Or you can send us an email directly to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com, and we will send you the link to this show. You can also check out past shows, uh, all 139 of them uh, on the website there. Uh, do not miss uh, do not miss next week's show. We'll be going over um, tree care techniques as well as what you should and shouldn't be doing to your trees right now and watering the best way to get the best results. And our guest will be executive gardener Jeff Burham and we'll answer your garden questions. So until next week for... Holly Baird. I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden.